Hello and welcome back. On this episode we look at some more uh, 3D printed stuff that I've brought printed off on the Ender 3 Pro and some upgrades I've done to the machine. This is the uh, Zastone charger battery base. Uh, this is the little unit that interfaces with the charger that lets me charge the Zastone battery which has an 18650 battery in it. Uh, if you've watched the previous episode you've seen this coming in. I was just waiting for the gold pins to come in for this unit before I could actually finish it off. So a couple of people had asked so I thought I would just show the completed item I'm really pleased with how this has come out it was uh, one of the sort of second or third things that I designed in uh, design spark and I was really happy with how, how it's come out these are the little sprung loaded gold pins so I made a, a little adapter for these to go in in case I have to change them again because uh, uh, I know from experience that these things don't last forever so I've soldered in the fuses uh, inside the uh, the adapter and they obviously double up as the connection points for the charger there you can see them both on the top and the bottom hot glued them in just to stop them moving because I don't foresee them actually blowing and if they do I'll have to just change them anyway and a uh, little bit of printed off a little label so I could tell which is positive and which is negative um, the charger I'm using is actually protected against reverse polarity anyway um, design spark again a great bit of software fantastic and uh, really really easy to, uh, to to just add things into existing models just create a new item and hide the one if you want to look at it there you can spin it around and it very accurate printed this at point 0.1 resolution on the end of three and those holes were spot on and uh, really really thin those pins are only a millimeter and uh, they press fitted in there nicely push the little adapter plate in a hot glue peels off so it's not a permanent solution which is great so if I do need to change it I can just change that over and fit a new one in time but I don't foresee it ever really going but I just thought I'd do it as an option I've since printed a little back plate cover to cover that up and there you can see the pins nicely flush in the unit so this is the external charger block I've got for it and you can obviously you can see you can charge two units off of this one if you really wanted to and we stick the uh, radio into the base there the V77 and away she goes and uh, I watched this charge the, the battery fully so I'm, I'm confident that uh, this solution is going to work really really well for the Zastone V77 so that's that I thought I would just uh, give it some finishing touches so I've got one of these cellulose uh, marker pens uh, with the ball bearing in and uh, you can paint pretty much anything onto PLA within reason. Uh, so I cleaned it up with a bit of isopropyl just to get any of my greasy uh, fingerprints off. Gave it a wipe down, obviously you can use any colour here, I think silver would look good, white would have looked pretty good. And uh, you just pan over the nice thing with the embossed letter in there. Um, I must mention that there's no text function in Design Spark, but you can, you can use Tinkercad or other things like that and bring them in separately. So this is a, a little charging, not a charging base, a little seat for your radio, which tilts your tilts the radio back while it's sat in the charger base. Because I find I'm quite tall in the saddle, and when I sit down, I can't see the screen on my uh, DMR radio. So I printed this one up for uh, for Lewis for Ringway Manchester or Blingway Manchester, as I call it now, because I put the nice gold lettering on the front. And uh, really, again, please, how these come out, the charger. But you'll see in a second the charger base is just clip into this it's like a little lazy boy chair and it it's quite a good angle there it, it leans back and i put a support at the back of it to stop it tipping over and it just means that when it's on the desk you get you get the, the screen at just the right angle again i'll put some little rubber feet on the bottom of that to stop it uh, spinning around and these have been quite popular i've printed these for a few friends as well they uh, they really like it it just tilts the radio up at just the right angle I've since tweaked the design a little bit so it grips the base a little bit better uh, now it's nice and firm it doesn't move at all so that's the nice thing you can prototype with uh, with uh, 3d printing and, and make some really great and fun gadgets so yeah again I was uh, I was really pleased with how this uh, this came out and um, I'm sure when Lewis if you follow Lewis on his channel if you don't go and uh, uh, watch his, his stuff he's great and uh, he's going to be getting a 3d printer as well and uh, and joining in all the fun and what we can do with these uh, amazing bits of kit to you know just help tweak our hobby you know make things uh, just a bit more usable and user friendly um, other news I've got a, a open spot there uh, for DMR and my bracket I made the, in the last episode for the radio here uh, is now doubling as a nice bracket so I've left it on the radio uh, school projects yeah my daughter had to design a crown so we did that on the 3d printer here and uh, uh, in a silver crown she wanted so I got some silver PLA in especially for that and uh, we spent some time together deciding on what she wanted and did this nice little crown and um, it was probably the biggest thing I've printed on the end of 3 Pro so far uh, designed again in Design Spark and uh, again really really pleased with how this came out 
uh, I think you'll agree it looks uh, it's pretty good all in one piece printed all in one go uh, yeah so moving on to the um, the PF8 uh, I managed to find it's quite tricky but I managed to find from this company some PLA that really closely matches there's an RAL uh, color reference for the case and this really closely matches the PF8 case it's uh, an unusual color um, it's, it's near enough for jazz we'll see what it's like when it's printed so I'm pretty pleased with that so we should be able to get that going um, the silver there which I'm going to use for the metal plate and uh, a quick run around the Ender 3 Pro people had asked this is the machine 200 pounds if you're interested in one of these I've got some affiliate links in the description below so if you click on those again it helps the channel out so if you're interested in buying one of these please have a look in the links in the description for all the kit I'm going to show on today's uh, episode this has a magnetic base which uh, which you can pull on and off uh, if you're gentle with it that's a really good idea you won't crease it or damage it and it just makes getting the prints off really really easy um, again this is such an amazing machine for the money it's all t-section aluminium here there's no uh, you know uh, poor quality stuff it's all robust and the parts are very very cheap I modified this one the reel normally sits on top of the Ender 3 but uh, I downloaded a bracket from Thingiverse and uh, so I could mount the reel on the side of it again there's the little light I designed for the uh, for the unit I'm really pleased with that as well <laughs> so yeah pretty much everything I did a modification here to the z-axis switch um, as stock it comes with a little plastic nub on it which I found meant you couldn't get the z-axis to go down low enough to get a decent bed level so I cut that off so I could lower it a little bit these are the adjuster wheels that you use for adjusting the bed they're, they're nice and big which gives you a lot more purchase to get an accurate adjustment of your bed um, and so the, the, the screen on the Ender 3 Pro is exactly the same as, as on the, the, the CR10 and on the, the Ender 3 nothing to change there essentially if you're printing when you're out of the house is a remote switch so you can turn it on and off I have a Miros Wi-Fi plug again those will be linked in the description if you're interested a much cheaper solution than some of the other ones out there for Wi-Fi plugs standard extruder top on this one although I have got the aluminium extruder kit coming which is a bit of an upgrade and here's the back of the machine and just be mindful if you get one of these check your connectors these XT60 connectors can sometimes be crimped and not soldered which can lead to heating issues so if you do get one of these machines keep an eye on that connector and if you're at all concerned change it over there's the little uh, bracket at the back of the unit that uh, I printed off which just brings this reel to the side and it makes the route into the extruder much more direct there you see uh, you haven't got that uh, otherwise you can wear a groove in the extruder if it sits at the top here on the top rail and also I, it meant I could push the 3d printer right back towards the wall so it's underneath the shelf it just uh, it was just better for me all round really so again really happy with this light I printed t-section t-section shaped bits of plastic so it just slid in the rails right the next project was for Mick G0 LDB and this was for his Lycian he wanted to put it in his car uh, and sit it in the top of the dash where the little cutout is um, there was couldn't see any real simple way of doing this he, he needs it to sit in this little cubby hole and he wanted it angled so he could actually tilt it up and down and, and also that bring it into the shack and use it in the shack so it represented quite a, a challenge really because um, trying to hold the, the, the radio steady stop it moving around um, so I got going with Design Spark and came up with a little idea which I'll show you later um, someone also asked about the the uh, I'll show actually show you that in the next episode not later <laughs> Um, someone also asked about the LED uh, strips I use for the light. These are they. They're five pound on a reel for five meters. Um, I picked these up. I wanted to show you guys. These are fantastic. Again, the links in the description for checking around the printer when it's printing, just to give you that bit of directional light. They're uh, basically a torch, USB rechargeable, with a very bright sort of cob strip LED lights. Um, and, and an end light there if you need to poke into a hole or anything and they also have this function there are three different light levels and they also have a red light there and a flashing red light so you can use them in the car as a warning beacon and stuff really nicely made these and really really so I just thought they were great and I've showed the, these again to a few people magnetic base so they stick on things there's a hook on the bottom of them so they hang on things uh, USB rechargeable I don't, I don't know how they make these for £10 I really don't so I was so impressed with these um, I bought two of them <laughs> but there, there's the uh, there's the there's the hook in the bottom of the, of the base again you know you could have that on hanging somewhere so if you're camping or something you know um, 
I don't know what uh, most of my viewers are like, but I think most of the, most folks watching, particularly the chaps, like a good torch. It's a very uh, it's a thing that us that fellows seem to seem to go go for, isn't it? We're like sort of literally like uh, moths to the candle for for a decent torch. So when you do find a decent torch, I think it's something uh, to cherish because you know I grew up in the 70s when let's face it, they weren't very decent. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, I bought two of these. Really, really impressive. So again, link in the description if you're interested in those. On to more lighting, I got these uh, for the studio lighting. Uh, I'm very, very pleased with. If you want to see what these are all about, go on to Tech Moan's channel. If you've not uh, subscribed to him, go and have a look. He does a very good and comprehensive review of these lights, but these are a very good light uh, for studio uh, work. They come with uh, batteries as well, so you can use them remotely. And they offer like white and sort of yellow colors. You can mix the colors to get the right color balance for your shot. So yeah, really, really nice. Look at Techman's channel for those. On the side, that someone asked about the air pistol, or assumed it was an air pistol. It definitely is an air pistol. This is the CP88, which I used in the PF8 video. Uh, I've had this for, for about 15 or so years now. Uh, it's a very, very nicely made uh, gun, this. It's made, it was made in the Wolfer factory. And um, it uh, I don't use it that much, but it's a really nice... Uh, Nice bit of kit to have uh, have around and just plink the shoot tins in the garden. It runs off CO2 and has a rotary mag in it. And uh, somebody just asked, they said, oh, can you show me what that gun is? And uh, so I thought I would uh, I would just break that out of the case and show you guys there. I don't believe you can get super point pellets anymore. I don't know. Um, they're getting a bit strict on the sort of pellets you're allowed these days. Um, you're certainly not allowed the sabos or anything with a skirt that pops off, which I could 3D print, ironically. <laughs> Anyway, here's some shots of the, again, some static photographs of the of the radio in the base. And um, yeah, I, I, like I say, I printed one for Mick. He was really, really happy with these. So if you've been watching, thanks ever so much. Join us for some more news on the PF8 radio here, as shown in the professionals. Really, really nostalgic bit of kit, this. And uh, like I say, these are so hard to find. And everyone that's contacted me has said, oh, I'm really pleased you're doing this because uh, literally in a few years time they'd probably be almost impossible to find so if we can make this replica come somewhere near the existing radio then i'm going to be pleased with that i'm going to be making up a uh, uh, a very very close replica uh, on the 3d printer but i think the final version will be cnc machined fully completely uh, so yeah that's going to be an absolute belter so, so if you have been thanks ever so much for watching i really appreciate you guys support and please bear with me on the pf8 project i'm trying to hone my skills before we finally crack the nut so if you have been thanks ever so much for watching and uh, we'll catch you literally on the next one it should be uh, the next video out in about a week's time i'm aiming for about a week between between videos because i'm very very busy doing other stuff as you can probably imagine so yeah thanks again we'll see you soon Thank you.